Hi. We, hi guys, Tim. Veronica. Crack Clay, building in the fair proof marriage, not man's way. Man will always let you down. They'll mess it up every time. But God's, God's way. way. Do it God's way. Honey, we're actually wearing Liberty. What? No, we're wearing. We're not, no, but we're actually wearing Liberty t-shirts of players who played during Liberty, but now play for the Browns. The, the Browns, Browns too. Browns so, picked up two Liberty players as free agents after the draft. They did walk on. And that was Elijah Benton, who's a safety, and Solomon A. Ajay, who is a linebacker. Both walked on yesterday to the Browns and got signed after the draft. And the Redskins signed my favorite Liberty player, and many people's favorite, Antonio Gandy Golden yesterday Superstar. in the fourth round of the he draft. He was the, we by far very, the best receiver. He's awesome. Great receiver. Awesome. If the rest mm -hmm. of the Redskins can play as well as Antonio did at Liberty this week, then we are going to be right. doing good. And you know what? Uh -huh. This year, I had to eat my words because the whole time we've been married, the draft was this week, right? Which is how our people got drafted. So every year since we've been dating and married, Tim's team, the Browns, have had the number one draft pick, which means what? They had the worst season of all. This year, Veronica had to eat her words because the Browns had number 10 and the Redskins had number two. So my team clearly did not play as well as his this year, this past season. But we have a new season coming up, and we have Antonio. I and think we're going, I think we're on the fast. upswing though. I think you're kind of in the downswing. It's going to be a couple. We de have AGG now. It'll be only be a couple of decades before you're back in this room. Oh okay, my sweetie. goodness! Because the Browns are going to be the team to beat th this year if they play. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice if they play, but that's mm -hmm. okay. But speaking of sports, play. speaking of oh. sports, honey, when we were dating, I just loved it when you went and watch a you came and watch a football game with me. And just sat there with me, shoulder to shoulder, didn't even say a word, and just sat there with me. And just watched the game. And just watched the game. I did that a lot, didn't you, I? Yeah. I watched whole games. The yeah. whole game. You from did. From start to finish. And, but you're going to say football. I know, I know. The football games, the baseball games, the... But even after... What else, the, but what else did I watch? I watched... Oh, and, and the Cavaliers, because... Well, I'm going to say that after we're married. Because after we're married. basketball is my favorite sport Totally, my favorite she, sport. She became a huge basketball fan of the Cavaliers. And because I went to VCU, and our only kind of sports team was the was basketball, right. so I became a huge um, basketball fan. But anyway, but then after we get married, in the beginning, I still did that, right? And I still but, do sometimes but still, now. But, then you, but but what's this excuse you say? What but is, you just but sometimes I have so much to do. I mean, I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I'm a business owner. I still work for another place in Richmond. I am busy, and then there the the laundry has to get done. And but honey, your husband just appreciated so much. I remember when I coach, I played softball and coach baseball, and you'd come over and watch me, and you would just sit there right next to me, honey. You didn't even say a word. You just, I, I just looked over there and go, "There's my best friend." I mean, there's my wife and my best friend being so supportive of me and not saying a word. I just fell in love with you all over again, honey. And I remember we, but I remember in the, I played ball and and coached uh, basketball. You could you just you were there every game, just sitting there with me, next to me. I looked over and waved and I said, "There's my beautiful bride." But I just loved that you were just there with me, shoulder to shoulder, mm -hmm. not sure. looking at each other. We were actually looking this way, but I knew you were there. And you didn't so, say a word, honey. Well, you keep emphasizing that I didn't say a word. Well, I know that because it doesn't happen much. I but didn't I, notice you know, that. I remember as a kid, I remember as a kid, I was riding my bike around. True story. And I would notice a man and a woman. He was always, he, he was always working in the car. And the woman was out there sitting there. She may have been smoking a cigarette or doing her nails or something. But she was just sitting there, talk, just not saying a word. Not to say the word. Some of the best times we've had, my wife had. Maybe maybe went to an Indians game they lost. Maybe watched a Browns game they lost. You know, I told her, honey, that was awesome. Just the, she's like, what was, honey? I didn't get anything done. We didn't talk. We didn't do this. But it was awesome to me because my best friend was there. 
When I played softball, I always noticed the women in the, because it was co-ed, how some of the women came out with their husbands. They kept out of, they didn't play. They just sat there and watched with them, even in the dugout. And some women played and their husbands would come, not say a word to each other, just, just support each other. That's important in the sweetheart. It is. So something that your husband or your man needs is relationship with you. And for men, being in relationship is shoulder to shoulder. And they want you to be their friend. Right. So when uh, we read this, it was like, oh, that is so true because... You know, I, I do. I'm guilty. Guilty is charged that the woman, he'll call her to come sit down and watch TV. Honey, just come watch a show with me. Yeah. And it could be like the Discovery Channel, not in our house. In our house, no, it's, our house, no. In no. Our house it's ESPN. It'd be like Dateline, Dateline. In our house, it's ESPN or, or Dateline. Dateline. And, and I go and or, sit down and, um, and I'm like sitting there watching, not into it. And I think, well, I've got 10,000 other things that I need to be me. doing. I, well, I like to read, right. so that's okay. Um, so, but but if I'm not into the show, it's not offensive or anything. I'm just kind of bored with it. Then I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to go on back upstairs and fold the laundry or go make sure the kids have done their schoolwork. You know, I mean, just whatever. Or Shepard's ready for school the next day. Whatever I need to do, do the dishes. So... Um, but, so it's so interesting because that is what this chapter is about. So the R in the chairs, we've been talking about what men need from their women, which is respect, and the way that we show respect, we've been doing in the acronym of chairs. And so tonight we're on the R, which is relationship, shoulder to shoulder with you. So in Genesis, um, so for some reason, men, and then we get offended because we're like, oh, then he's mad that you leave. Because he just, and you're like, well, what? You didn't even want to talk to me. You just wanted me to sit there and watch a show for you that I'm not interested in. But before him, that gives him energy. He likes it. If we just sit next to him and while he's doing what he's doing, right? So even though that's not what we need, we need to talk. We're talkers. Um, and we need eye contact. He needs to sit side by side. In Genesis 2.18, it says, I will make a helper who is just right for him. So we as women need to learn to be a helper to him. And one of the ways to do that is to put our own needs aside sometimes. Um, just like it did when we were dating, honey. Right, wow. right. And we've talked about that before. Same because thing. when we did his needs or her needs, his needs, her needs, right. one of the top five things Domestic that support. men need is a recreational companionship. right. right. Recreational companionship. And this is the Best same friend. thing. This right. is the same thing because men are shoulder to shoulder. So um, when you should, so you should not only be looking at your own interests, but also to your husband's. And yeah, yeah, so, yep, yep, yep. Okay. Well, a lot of this person. So the, in the New Testament, um, oh, so why do men like shoulder to shoulder? That's the question, right? Yeah. Why do men like shoulder to shoulder? Well, we don't really know other than God created them that way is what and we're walking through the book, Re Love and Respect. And he says, I don't really know. He's a man. But obviously God created us this way. And if you look back into, in the Bible, even in Song of Solomon, there's references not only to their passion, but to their friendship. Well, because women, women... Women share the experiences by talking about them to each other, ex examining and, and infusing the experiences with their impressions, emotions. Yeah. But with men, it's what? A shoulder to shoulder. Activity. Yeah, activity. Yeah. So, so when, and then in the New Testament, um, Paul in Titus 2, 3 and 4 is telling the older women to teach the younger women how to show Phileo to their husband, which is a brotherly love, friendship. a friendship to show had not. So that's not just um, loving him, but respecting him, being his friend, because that's how he feels respect is by you being his right. friend. And so a lot of men, when they're asked if their wife likes them, I mean, if their wife loves them, they say yes. But if they say, does she like you? They're not sure. Why is that? Because even though... Uh, because a lot of times we get into that habit of just um, kind of a little bit what we touched on last week about the nagging and the, the just ber berating and um, 
badgering and criticizing them. You do your thing, honey, and I'll do my thing. So, and that's what it comes down to, because yeah. when you start nagging and criticizing them, then they don't want to be around you so much. And so we have to be friendly and loving, and that's part of this as well, to be friendly and loving to them. Good and he can um, be the friend of the wife of his youth, but later he gets rejected by her nagging and criticizing. So research, this is interesting, even research supported this theory on theory men. Right, well, this yeah. even research right. supported this on this, yeah. they did studies. They put together boys, two boys, two girls, um, two males, two females of multiple ages. So they were like had an elementary school, uh, middle school, high school, a young adult and older. And they would put groups of two males, groups of two females, right. and they would have one table and two chairs in the room. And inevitably, every single time, the guys would go in and they would sit in the chairs facing out this way and they would just sit shoulder to shoulder. They're looking at something. Looking at something else, shoulder to shoulder. Women would turn their chairs inward and face each other because they want eye contact. And that's how we are. If you think about it, we women, we want to talk. We want to talk all the time. Because us guys, we... We become close by activities. Right. So I play softball with people. Blood brothers. That's how we become best friends. Blood brothers as kids. We we grew up with the kids being playing sports, ball, all that stuff. And man, we become so close because of what we do, our activities. So the tenth grade boys were the ones who um, right. seemed to be the most transparent right. during the experiment. How about that? And because tenth grade boy, I mean, they're doing things together. So right. while they're it creating ex sharing experiences and the sharing of experiences for men builds relationship that's how they build relationship by sharing experiences with them which is why they want us to sit with them because they want us to experience that show with them and um so, so the, the men will have we love other men that have interest we have the same interests, like browns fans or or thomas road or a church or play ball golf that's how we build our relationship on, on an activity. That's how men do it. So little boys grow up. They have this, this is how they are. They have their, their guy well, friends they, they hang right. out with. They have so their they, blood brother things. They're playing, riding bikes with, playing sports with. So they expect and your they, wife to be the same way. They grow up. They fall in love. They get married. They expect her to be like him and share experiences with him. Right. Especially because when she was dating, she was all eager to share experiences with him, right? But sometimes right. we do that. They don't switch. When we get married, we don't so want to So you want to marry your best friend. You want mm -hmm. your best friend to be your wife. To hang out and have interest with you. Play tennis. So this, for Christmas, I thought, what sport can I do? What's something we can do together? I thought tennis. I bought some rackets and the balls. And, I, and her and I played tennis before. And I think that's something we can kind of grow on and maybe play. Because I'm not an athlete. She's not She's not a jock. I'm not, I'm she's, not an she's not a jock. I'm but she athlete. attempts to be a jock. Mm -hmm. Okay? And just to see her go after the balls in the outfield. Just to see her play basketball, I just feel so, I, she's so cute. I love her so much. And I just love to see her try to get that tennis ball and hit it over the fence. But she's so good. But I want to do something like that. And have interest. I love, men love to have an interest that we both like. So we can both play together. I mean, it could be cards. It could be anything. But. Because what happens if you're not doing stuff together? Then you start to live separate lives. Good, good. And then that's right. when you're growing apart, right? right? And then there's going to be somebody who is willing to watch that show with him or to play that sport with him. So right. you've you got to just think about that. Um, and so when you... So how can doing nothing so ladies, build a relationship? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead. How well, how can doing nothing build a relationship? Well, that is doing nothing. For because us, it's doing nothing. Yeah. For you, it's doing something. Why? You have, to say, you have to do nothing. Just sit there. Your presence right there with me coaching basketball or playing softball or coaching softball is everything to me. That you're there. That you took your time to be there and just show me that you, you're my buddy. My friend would do that. My, my boyfriend as a kid. Okay. And that you're doing that. That's what I want. And don't, don't just sing a word. Just your presence. I'm not a mechanic. I would never work on cars. But a lot of men are. I can see where you, what you'd want your wife, your best friend just hanging out there with you. And at that, I'm sure you're going to say, honey, that was awesome. And she don't understand why that was so awesome. Well, we didn't talk about nothing. I didn't say nothing. 
But that's awesome to a man. And but you figure. know what? Sometimes, I mean, it helps me to understand why sometimes you just want me with you at the store, too. Right. You know? Right. Because you, she, I do. Yeah. yeah. And, well, and I'm like, well, she's so good at the store. People um, love her. So, so it is important. And for us, we don't, because we're not wired that way, we might not get it. But it's not for us to get. It's just for us to understand and to try to be there for him. So if you're having trouble in your relationship and you haven't had a good heart-to-heart -heart with your husband or, or in a while, um, then try just being there. Just try to be present with him without talking to him, without um, having conversations. Just, just go sit word. down next to him and watch watch a show with him, whatever his interests are. Just go sit with him and be there with him while he does it. Uh, some women go hunting with their husbands or fishing with their husbands, which would be so boring to me, but I would do it if you were into There's it. There's a story here about people who hunt. Not. They didn't catch a thing to get a ball. Baseball's not easy to watch unless you're a baseball fan. I'm a fanatic baseball fan, and she's actually come and watch baseball with me. Mm -hmm. that's, sit down that's, pure that mm -hmm. that's pure love. That's pure love. You know, Philippians 2 4 says, Philippians 2 4 says, as a wife, you should look not only to your own interests, but also to your, to your husband's. Shoulder to shoulder entrance. Isn't that amazing? So, Maybe. all right, ladies and gentlemen, that was it. So, that was a pretty well, wait, quick one tonight. Oh, wait, oh, no, I got to read the end. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, wait. So, sorry, I'm about to slack on my duties tonight, guys. Oh, well, you want to. Let me read this verse here. Go ahead and read okay. that one. A husband? a husband can be his wife's friend. I did that one. Okay. 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 No, we didn't. There was this is a really brief one. Yes. The Forever Bond. Uh, oh, that was the Blood Brothers. Sorry, guys. Um, so Tim, you want to talk a little bit about next week? Well, I'm gonna talk about next week after you start with that. Stay together. So, um, okay. find something. Find something you have an interest in. Okay, here we go. We should have been queued up. Sorry. Your um, husband will feel your, you value his shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder friendship when you tell him you like him and you show it. He knows you love him, but he often wonders if you really like him. You respond to his invitation to engage in recreational activities together, or you come along to watch him. You don't have to go every time, but just now and then will energize him more than you realize. You enable him to open up and talk to you as you do things shoulder to shoulder. You hear that? You enable him to open up and talk to you when you do things shoulder to shoulder. So you that's the way to get him to start talking. Start talking. Right. That's the way to get him to start talking. Absolutely. Okay, you encourage him to spend time alone, which energizes him to reconnect with right. you later. And that's hard for me, like, but I do it. Mm -hmm. um, you don't denounce you do not denounce his shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder activities with his male friends to get him to spend more time face-to-face -to -face with you. Respect his friendships, and he will be more likely to want you to join him shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder at other times. Mm -hmm. So, everything, every, uh, the response that we had on Facebook, you were all, you were all correct. But this is a little bit different, how the men and the women are differently, because women want that coffee table pointing to each other talking. And men, we need to do that. For our wives because that's her need she has emotional needs she needs us to listen but the same token us men we love the shoulder to shoulder looking out this way maybe that's why we like driving maybe that's why men like to drive talk in the car we're not we're, we maybe glance at our wife a couple times but well we, we can talk a lot can't we men maybe we like talking a little more in the car than we do in the coffee shop and Some it's men. good with your sons Some too. Men. If your mom, if you, your moms, the your boys, sons, the sons, the yeah. sons, they like you to go out there and I go and play, watch them play she, ball. She, we, we go out in the field and play table. play. She couldn't come today, but I love when she comes out and watches us play with my boys, three or four boys. I love when she's out there watching, cheering us on. It means a lot to a man to have to be to marry not only a cheerleader, but some but a companion. If you ask most men, you ask them. What kind of person you want to marry? I want to marry my best friend. Most men will say that because they're used to having baseball buddies and that's how they became close. I'm thinking of all my friends right now who I'm so close to because of sports or whatever the case may be. Next week, Jesus loves you. Jesus has a plan for you. He died for you. And I, I just want you to know that 
after 50 years of living in, living in sin and, and living for the devil, the locust, I'm so glad he redeemed me and I have redemption. That's why I can't talk. I can't stop talking about Jesus. I love him and I live for Jesus. Next week, why would a man, question, why would a man, why would a man be willing to give up everything? Marriage, family, business reputation, even his relationship with the Lord just to continue with what? That maybe some men aren't getting. If you're a married man and you go fill an application and it says on there, sex, what's our response to that? <laughs> Is it not enough or just right? Whatever the case may be. All right. Also, if we're, why don't you ever, how, how can we don't read in the Bible? Let his chest satisfy you. Ladies, why is not that, why isn't that in the Bible? Oh. Mm -hmm. But let thy breast satisfy you always. Mm -hmm. Husky is not your man's chest to satisfy you always. Just some things we're going to be talking about next week as we talk about that. Okay? We, we're here for you. Crack play. Building a fair-proof marriage God's way. We know the devil is going to, does everything he can to break up a marriage. Okay? And get his foot in that door. And start justifying sin a little bit at a time if our needs aren't being met. So we want to meet each other's needs. Most importantly for him. Because Jesus wants his marriage to succeed correctly, the right way. It's Jesus first. And then my beautiful spouse. And then everything else. Children and, and whatever the your career, whatever the case may be. But it's got to be Jesus first. And then spouse. Okay. And marriage second. And Very hello, second. Terry Taggett. Big, big buddy, go Browns. That's right. We love you, man. We love you, Go guys. Jesus, guys. What an what a, what a, what a awesome opportunity in this time to, to set back. We have time to tell people about Jesus. Make sure your family is going to heaven with you. Make sure you're on a team. God's team. The winning team. He wins. It's all about a relationship with him. You know, I, I pray every week in our Sunday school class for, I, I have a Mormon doctor. I have a Jehovah Witness preacher. And I have a wonderful Jewish friend who are the sweetest people in the world. It's so kind and so religious. But without Jesus, they're lost. I had one, more, one more thing. I had a patient come the other Saturday. I did a test. They were Catholics. And they went to a place in Cleveland that says, a, a born again priest is going to tell you about Jesus. Isn't that awesome? He went and got saved. Isn't that awesome? No matter what religion you are, you have to be born again. So we love you guys. We'll see you next week. Have a great evening. We're here for you. Okay. Redskins and Browns. Future Liberty players. Yes. Bye. We got Liberty shirts on. Future right Liberty. Now. Yeah. Yeah. We